How bad has the excess deaths been during the pandemic? World Health Organization has released the latest data that just came out. This is now global information. So we're actually going to look at excess mortality in 2020 and 2021 that just been published on a global scale. And it's quite significant. So we've been hearing about these excess deaths based on governmental reports from various different locations around the world and here we're going to have something more akin on a global scale so first of all let's talk about what excess mortality is oh before we get started my name is dr michael arashik of marriage genomics but first let's define what is excess mortality is basically the number of deaths during cataclysmic event or a pandemic that is in excess of what we normally expected. It's fairly logical, right? So that's what the World Health Organization has been measured, measuring. And they managed to measure this very successfully on a monthly basis for approximately 100 countries. For all other countries, what they had to do, they were forced to actually estimate it. They developed ways to be able to successfully estimate that type of information. And uh, uh, which countries were represented the most versus the least. Africa was represented the least. Only 13% of the African nations were able to provide monthly statistics that they were able to use. Southeast Asian region was the, the second worst. The best was Europe. Europe, 96% um, of all nation, European nations were able to provide information, monthly information for those two years. The second best global region was the Americas. 66% of all participating nations were able to provide important or quality information that that World Health Organization was able to use. Based on, on all of this, they were able to determine um, what the excess mortality on a global scale is. Before we get going, though, um, let's talk about what they measured. So, of course, they measured the, just the numbers themselves, obviously, and what, did, what are the actual excess deaths in different regions of the world. So that's one thing that they did. They also measured excess deaths per capita. So that's uh, basically per, per certain group of people. So that's the common denominator, if you will. They also did what is referred to, what they refer to as either p-value or p-score, which is very interesting. Basically, it was a ratio between the excess death, deaths and the expected deaths. So the higher the ratio, the more deaths they were, they, that was present. And it was the, this was presented as a percentage so let's say if the p score is 50 percent that means that excess deaths were increased by 50 percent if the p score was 100 percent then excess deaths were increased by 100 percent over what would be normally expected meaning doubling basically the number of deaths for a particular region would double if p score was 100 percent that was my favorite metric so we're gonna be talking about that in a moment as well and then they also did a ratio between the excess deaths and COVID deaths, okay? So let's get started the, in terms of the, what the stats they were able to observe. So in terms of um, total number of deaths globally for 2020 and 2021, they were able to measure approximately, they estimate that in, a, the, in addition about 15 million, one five million people died that would not be expected to die because of the duration of this pandemic. Let's break that number down before we start going into other metrics. And um, in about 2020, that accounted for about 5 million deaths. And 2021, it accounted for additional 10, 10 million deaths that were in excess. So 2021 was actually worse, more tragic year than 2020. Okay, so that's that's interesting and if you look at the the monthly plotted data in 2021 you can see this massive spike of deaths and that was actually accounted by india um practically by itself india had a horrible COVID event in in, uh, in that time in about summer of 2021 around that uh, time period and that accounted for a lot of excess deaths so now let's talk about those numbers so in terms of numbers india had the highest excess death numbers of all countries in that time overall in that time period and accounted for almost 5 million deaths alone in of all of those 15 million that I just mentioned now there's a, a three nations that breached or that were around 1 million as well 
that was Russia in this order, followed by Indonesia, I believe, and then United States. So these four nations, India, Russia, Indonesia, United States, accounted for more than half of all of the excess deaths observed in the entire world in that time period. However, that's partially because these countries have a lot of people. So this is one of the reasons why this, this Peace Corps metric was very interesting because it accounts population size of a given nation. So let's talk about that because when you actually look at Peace Corps value and you look at the excess deaths in relation to, to how many people live in a nation, United States didn't even make it in the top 25 nations and India was in the top 21, despite its very high number, just because obviously India is such a populous nation. So that's very interesting to look at this, which B value allows you to actually see more correctly as to which nations were most dramatically affected. And the nation that was hit the hardest, according to the Peace Corps value, meaning the nation that had the largest excess deaths that you would not expect that was above the normal of what you would expect was actually Peru. So Peru, their Peace Corps value was 97%, so almost 100%, meaning basically their death rate amongst their population basically doubled in that time period. So they were hit the hardest of all nations. This was followed by, I believe, Ecuador with, about, with around 50% Peace Corps value, meaning their death rate of was increased by 50% over what would be normally expected for that nation. And then uh, I think in third place, it might have been Bolivia with 40%. And then you can see different, well, how different nations fared in, in terms of the percentage of excess deaths per, per nation. Okay? The last thing that they, that they did in this uh, publication, well, no, they did many things. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, this ratio between excess deaths and COVID deaths. And, Globally, excess deaths was almost three times higher than the total COVID deaths, which by the end of 2021 accounted just over 5 million deaths. Enormous number, actually, if you think about it, at the start of pandemic and the authors in this publication do mention that no one would have ever even thought this as possible. So this is not a, not a obviously trivial pandemic. It's very, had a huge, huge impact, obviously. So 5 million deaths, almost 300 million recorded infections. But nevertheless, besides those 5 million deaths, deaths accounted to COVID, obviously you have approximately 10, 10, 10 million additional deaths that are excess deaths for other reasons. There could be many different reasons that, that could account for that many. Obviously, overcrowded hospitals, lockdowns with inability to be able to, to gain access to, to the hospitals. But even the, the theory that I will be talking about in the future videos, which is now emerging theory that microclotting is causing events such as strokes in COVID patients or heart attacks, that they can contribute to these uh, cardiovascular problems that, that, uh, that have been observed and is a hallmark of the severe COVID-19 as well as long COVID. They might have also contributed to this. We will know potentially in the future if, the, if studies come out looking into this. Nevertheless, you can see there is a definite increase of excess deaths beyond just COVID. So COVID was not the only reason why we see these additional excess deaths. Now, if you look at the ratio, Africa seems to be hit the hardest. But here's the irony. If you look at excess deaths in Africa, they did not do that badly. They actually did fairly well. So what does that mean? Why is the ratio of their excess deaths so much higher in comparison to COVID, it's just because they have such low rates of recorded COVID deaths for whatever reasons that, it, that that is, whether that is under reporting or they just did very well. I don't know because I did not investigate that, but that's one of the, the reasons why you see this unusual uh, ratios in Africa. But what's really interesting is that is, uh, is um, how well some of the other regions did Pacific region did very well. And then some of the nations with potentially the strangest lockdowns did very well as well. Speaking of peer ratios, one more thing that I will mention is that different geographical regions did, uh, did mm, perform better than others, obviously. So the worst regions globally in terms of excess deaths were the Americas and Southeast uh, Asia region. And they accounted around, on average, they, those 
global regions of the world world accounted for about 20 percent extra de excess deaths over what would be normally expected now uh africa did obviously fa fairly well and uh what was really surprising so this was now uh, the other regions of the world where they were in the teens what was really surprising though was the western pacific nations because they basically reported no excess deaths so their their death rate during those ta that time time span was the same was the same as in in the past so uh, some of these nations um took on the zero COVID policy who knows maybe that contributed to this Obviously, there was a lot of people uh, speaking against that approach, but, but very interesting data coming out. So that's for the World Health Organization and um, excess death, global deaths that I want to tell you about. What they did not look at at all, which I wish they did, which was in how the countries did in relation to the vaccination status. They did not, I at least did not see that information in the paper. Maybe I missed that, but I didn't see it. So I want to... I, but anyway, I looked at another paper that was looking at this, also recent data that came out of the United States. So in this paper that I wanted to let you know, we're going to look how did vaccinated versus unvaccinated um, states do in the United States. And this data was from June 2021 till March 2022. So what the authors were doing is they were comparing Delta wave versus the Omicron wave. And there's some really interesting, surprising information to some degree as well. So, first of all, clearly United States did not do that well uh, in terms of COVID deaths uh, and excess deaths, as, as we were just mentioning a moment ago, approximately almost 400,000 people died in that time, short time period alone in the United States. That accounted for approximately, just from memory, about 112 people died per 100,000 um, population. And if, but here's the part that really surprised me is that if you subdivided this into Delta versus Omicron, Omicron that accounted to about 60 people per um, 61 people per 100,000 of the American population during Delta and 51 people per 100,000 of the American population during the Omicron wave. So they're, they're, these are very, very close. So you know how we keep hearing that Omicron is mild, but true. You, you would think that the death rates would be a lot lower, but that's actually not the case. Not only is it similar to the Delta death rate, but believe it or not, the same publication also looked at 20 and other nations that were highly vaccinated. And this is the surprise that all these nations, not all the nations, I should not say the majority of these nations, they did worse in terms of death during the Omicron wave than the Delta wave. So actually, United States is, one, is the one that goes in the opposite trend direction. They did better during the Omicron than the Delta. The vast majority of the nations, highly vaccinated nations, that this, the authors of this publication looked at, they actually did worse per, in terms of deaths per 100,000 people during Omicron and Delta. So this is really surprising, actually. Well, maybe not surprising if you think about that uh, over the concept that Omicron, after all, is became far more infectious. It was milder, but far more infectious, and therefore had the capacity to hit a lot more people. And maybe numerically, it resulted in a lot more deaths. But, you know, we keep saying Omicron is milder, Omicron is milder, and yet the data suggests that it actually might have become more deadlier because of the fact that it, I'm guessing right now that probably because it became more infectious, so it was able to hit a lot more people, and therefore we're seeing more victims of COVID-19. Surprising. But okay, let's go back to the United States. In terms of um, the COVID deaths, and we're going to talk about excess mortality as well, what the paper also looked at is the top 10 most vaccinated states in the United States versus the top, which accounted for about 73% um, percent vaccination on, uh, on average amongst those populations against the, the least 10 vaccinated states in the United States. And that uh, I believe that accounted for about 52 percent of the vaccinated population of those United States. And here is the remarkable difference. So on average, I believe 
it's from memory, it was about 70, maybe 75 deaths per 100,000 people in the top vaccinated states of the United States versus 150 in the least vaccinated states. So it shows you that vaccination really was saving a lot of lives during those two waves, Delta and the Omicron. This is corroborates a lot of data that is publishing and published in, in, as well. Basically, vaccines did their job in terms of saving lives, definitely. And so we, we cannot, uh, we cannot um, deny that because we cons consistently keep seeing these type of statistics. But uh, let's break it down a little bit more because there's a really interesting surprise here, which I think it poses some very interesting moral dilemma that we ultimately as a humanity have to discuss as well. So what are we talking about? When you look at the Delta again versus the Omicron, what happened in the top vaccinated states in the United States, once again, the Omicron wave was deadlier than the Delta wave. So I believe that they went from somewhere of 30, 30 deaths uh, to maybe uh, 40 deaths, uh, just around there, uh, from the Delta wave to the Omicron wave. So while a vaccine is saving lives, as the virus is evolving to dodge the vaccines, it becomes deadlier to the population in general, and that includes vaccinated population. Now, if you take a look at the least vaccinated 10 states, amongst that 150 people dying per 100,000 uh, 100, of the population, if you divide it into the Delta and the Omicron, the Omicron wave was less deadly than the Delta wave. So the trend is in the exact opposite. So I believe it was um, around 85 to, uh, in, during the Delta wave, 400,000 people of the population dying of COVID in the 10 least vaccinated states versus in an Omicron wave, it was about 60 to 65. So clearly what's happening, yes, it's still quite deadly in the less vaccinated states, but the trend is, is that the, the population is slowly becoming more protected from death. So what you're actually seeing is that despite 50% of the fact that 50% of the population in those states was vaccinated, clearly natural immunity in those who were unvaccinated is actually starting having its effect in being able to protect the population in general from the continuous death rates. Versus in all, like as I mentioned, in all of the vaccine, highly vaccinated nations, you see the trend in the opposite direction. This is actually very important. It was, and that was unaddressed in, uh, by, by, uh, by that publication. And I think this is something that we should be paying attention to because Perhaps natural immunity is something that we should also not disregard, but monitoring to see how it might be helping reducing the death rate of this ever-evolving virus. And this is kind of the moral dilemma that we're facing because on the one hand, the viral vaccines are clearly saving lives. And by the way, these vaccines, if you think of their scientific development, scientific design, <laughs> while many Many viewers might not agree with me in my, my concept of it, in my view, it actually represents a, one of the greatest pinnacle of scientific achievements when it comes to molecular biology. These vaccines were incredibly well designed. They were a really enormously, enormous achievement, except potentially they might have been used um, in a very disastrous moment because they were used in the middle of the pandemic. And that might have led to something like pushing the evolution of the virus because of the antibodies that are pushing the evolution of the virus. We discussed this in a previous video, how there's emerging scientific evidence showing how vaccines could be inducing immune escape of, of pathogens and how antibodies could be contributing to this. So it's a bit of a moral dilemma because what do you do? On the one hand, you can immediately save lives and not just a small amount of lives, but literally thousands upon thousands of lives, but at the same time, you potentially are pushing evolution of a pathogen to continue to be dangerous and continue to be afflicting us with attack and causing numerous deaths in the future. The way we're answering that moral dilemma is that obviously, clearly, our 
answer is we act now and we save lives now and we deal with the consequences later. But it is a, a bit of a conundrum that we still have yet to somewhat address as to how can we do this in a way that we might have to mitigate the future impact. But nevertheless, um, also with excess deaths, let's come back to that. Um, there were also, in addition to those COVID deaths, United States also showed excess deaths. There are approximately 155 excess deaths per 100,000 individuals in that short time period. Again, uh, uh, top 10 vaccinated um, states showed better statistics than the least 10 vaccinated states. It accounted huge, huge differential there. Approximately 65 deaths per 100,000 of population in the top 10 vaccinated states versus almost 200 deaths per 100,000 population in the 10 least vaccinated nations. And uh, the authors were mentioning, they, they mentioned interesting statistics. If the, the, all the states reach the same level of vaccination as the top 10 vaccinated states, they estimate that 100, at least 100,000 lives would have been saved from COVID and approximately a quarter of a million lives from all cause mortality as well. So really, really interesting data. Nevertheless, here's, we have to look, we have to be cognizant of this data, but also the, this kind of dilemma of vaccines saving lives on an immediate front while potentially making it more dangerous later on, as we are currently seeing that in terms of the death rate, um, death rates that were observed in the Delta wave from COVID, versus versus omicron one last thing that i'll mention before i wrap this up i'm getting cold too <laughs> is uh, is that um excess deaths in all of these nations that the authors looked in in that american study the trend was the opposite so that there were more excess deaths observed excess deaths so not COVID deaths excess deaths were higher during the delta and then decreased during the omicron with the COVID test, it was the opposite, but it shows you that the excess death mortality is at least decreasing in general. But it also shows you what pathogenicity might, how dangerous pathogenicity might potentially be. Not sure whether that pathogenicity of the Delta variant might have ac accounted for these additional excess deaths. That clearly could have been other factors as well, such as uh, lockdowns, right? We were in the midst of some of the most stringent lockdowns, who knows, right? But if it is pathogenicity, that could be interesting. We should be looking into this because as I will be talking in my upcoming video, the, and I've talked about this already in past videos, the pathogenicity of the Omicron family of variants is continuing to evolve and increase. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel. Stay healthy and go outdoors as much as you can. <laughs> This is a fantastic way uh, to get a free therapy. <laughs> and, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in another installment of this video and hopefully at another COVID Q&A event. If you want free tickets to that, subscribe to our newsletter, newsletter and the link to that is in the description below. Bye everyone and see you next time.